In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, your fellow redeemed by the blood of Christ. So, are you ready for Christmas yet? Have you put up your tree and other decorations, or are they still stashed away? Have you made a Christmas list, or bought gifts for loved ones, or have those thoughts not crossed your mind yet? Are you listening to Christmas music? Are you ready for Christmas? People will do a lot of different things to get ready for Christmas. You may do a lot of different things to get ready for Christmas. But know this, dear friends in Christ. There is really only one way to get ready for Christmas. And this, receiving the gospel, hearing the word of God, this This is how you get ready for Christmas. For if you don't keep hearing the word of God, if you don't keep receiving the gospel, you will miss Christmas this year. Even if you have all your decorations up, even if you've bought in all the Christmas gifts, even if you've been listening to Christmas music since the day after Halloween, you will still miss Christmas this year if you do not keep listening to the Word of God. You'll sleep right through it. Now, of course, I'm not talking about physical sleep. As tired as you may be, I don't think any of us can sleep for 24 hours straight, especially on December 25th. So what then am I talking about? How can you sleep right through Christmas? It's by missing out on the incarnation. Missing out on the fact that God is becoming a man to save you from all of your sins. That's how you can sleep through Christmas. That's how you can miss Christmas. It's by not celebrating Jesus' birth, not focusing on Jesus' birth, not making Jesus' birth the top priority this season. And by the way, it's not just unbelievers that fall into that trap, though they most definitely do since they do not know who Jesus is and do not know what Jesus has done, how can they really celebrate his birth? But even we Christians can fall into that trap. Even we Christians can somehow miss Christmas. And that might be strange for us to hear. For if I asked any one of you sitting out there, what's the purpose of Christmas? You all would answer, it's all about Jesus' birth. It's all about the incarnation, about God becoming a man to save us from all our sins. And you'd be right with that answer. And so if you know that about Christmas, if you know that Christmas is all about the birth of the Son of God, well then how then can you still miss Christmas? How can you sleep right through Christmas? Well, think about what happens this time of year. You get busy. In fact, you have so many things to do that it is quite easy to be overwhelmed. I've already mentioned some, right? Decorating the house, buying gifts, shipping gifts to loved ones who are far away. That's not even mentioning planning your Christmas gathering, whatever that may look like this year. It's not even mentioning all the the end-of-the-year projects at work, end-of-semester projects at school. It's not mentioning planning out what you're going to do with your kids when they're home for two weeks over Christmas vacation. And you can probably add other things. You see, Satan is really good at what he does. He doesn't like it when you focus on the Incarnation. And you're remembering that God is becoming a man to save you from all your sins. He knows what damage that causes to him. And so he will pack your life full of so many different things. All so that you focus on something, anything else, as opposed to the birth of your Savior. 
It's one of the reasons why you're so busy this time of the year. It's one of the reasons why your schedule is packed full of so many things to do. Satan is trying his hardest to get your focus off of Christ. And we must admit that we've fallen into that trap of Satan before. We've all let the busyness of life crowd out our celebration of Christ. It really can happen at any time during the year. But I think it especially happens around this time, Christmas time, because of all the other things on our agenda, all the other things that we have to do. And so is it possible for us to fend off that attack from Satan? Well, look at our text. You see, this is the reason we're studying this text here this morning. At first, it might seem a little strange to look at this text on the first Sunday in Advent, for this text is talking about waiting and watching for Jesus to come because we don't know when he is coming. That doesn't seem to apply to his birth. We know when we're going to celebrate Christmas, right? It's December 25th. What we don't know is when he is going to return in all his glory. We don't know when he will come with all his angels to judge the living and the dead. In fact, not even the angels in heaven know that date. And Jesus tells us it'll come at a time that we do not expect it. Maybe it'll be in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or early in the morning. Maybe it'll be in the broad daylight of the afternoon. We don't know when Jesus is going to return. What we do know is that when Jesus returns in all his glory, he better not find you sleeping. He better not find you unprepared for his arrival. For just like that master in our text commanded his servant to keep watch for his return, remember that? So also our Savior commands us to keep watch for his return. For Jesus says, what I say to you, I say to everyone, keep watch. And how can we possibly do that? How can we stay awake and alert so that we are always watching for Jesus to come? Well, it's not by climbing up a mountain and staring into the sky the way people have tried in the past. It's not by separating ourselves from the world around us in our nice little Christian cloisters. None of those is the way that we wait and watch for Jesus to come. Instead, listen to what Jesus said in our text. This is the important verse in our text. Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Yes, we keep watch by receiving the gospel, by listening to the word of God, For receiving the gospel, listening to the word of God, it is the only way that you can be ready for Christ to come, whether it's his return as judge over all or even even his birth in Bethlehem. But let's go back to our original question. Are you ready for Christmas? Well, think about this, dear friends in Christ. Everything that makes you so busy this time of year. All the different things that Satan will try to use to distract you from what is most important. From family gatherings, to gifts, to Christmas music, to decorations, and everything in between. Some of those things are very good things, but all of those things, they pass away. None of them last forever. They're here today and gone tomorrow. In fact, this Christmas season, you may not even be able to do some of those things because of the virus. And I think that's actually a good thing in this one respect. It'll remind you of what is most important. It'll remind you of the one thing the virus cannot take away from you. The one thing that will never, ever be taken away from you. And that is the gospel. That is the word of God. For the message of what Jesus has done for you has not changed. And it will never change. 
It hasn't changed since Isaiah wrote those words in our Old Testament lesson, begging God to come down into this world because he knew when God arrived, he would do great things. And it hasn't changed since King David wrote the words of our psalm, Psalm 24, asking the Lord of glory to enter his heart because when he did, he would win a great battle for him. It hasn't changed since Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, praying to God that he keep the Thessalonians faithful until he returned. And it will not change today. For the exact same word that kept God's Old Testament people awake and alert as they waited for God to fulfill that promise and send his Messiah into the world. The same exact word that kept the Thessalonians awake and alert as they waited and watched for Jesus to come, whether it be at the end of their life or the end of the world, that same word, that same exact word is what will prevent the busyness of this time of the year from distracting you or overwhelming you so that you can remain awake and alert and wait and watch for your Savior to come. That's how you're ready to celebrate Christmas. It's how you're ready for your Lord to return in all his glory, even if he comes before Christmas. It's by receiving the gospel, by hearing this word of God. For the gospel, the word of God creates faith in your heart. Faith that allows you to receive the forgiveness which Christ Jesus won for you. That's why the gospel, the word of God, is the one and only way that can make you ready for Christ to come. For without the gospel, the word of God you would not focus on the incarnation, on the fact that God is going to become a man for you to take away all your sins. Instead, you'd be focused on decorations and gifts and parties. And without the gospel, the word of God, you would not have peace and joy this Christmas, even if you got to get together with your whole family. Instead, you would just be filled with stress and anxiety, wondering if you could meet all the deadlines. Without the gospel, the word of God, you would not be waiting and watching for Jesus to come. You would miss out on his birth in Bethlehem, and perhaps worse, you would be caught unprepared when he returns in all his glory on the last day. For the gospel, the word of God, gives Christ to you. The gospel, the word of God, reveals Christ to you. The gospel, the word of God, gives you the forgiveness that Christ won for you by his death and resurrection. And therefore, the gospel, the word of God, is the one and only thing that can make you ready for Christ to come. And so, my dear Christian friends, as we begin the season of Advent here today, Let's remember the one thing that really is needful. It's not the decorations or the music or the gifts or the parties or family gatherings or any of those things, as good as they may be. Those things are here today and gone tomorrow. They will all pass away. And so do not let those things crowd out the one thing that will never pass away. The gospel, the word of God. Throughout this season, as often as you can, make sure that you keep on hearing this word, that you keep on receiving the gospel. There's nothing more important. For this is how you will be made ready for the coming of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as we confess the one true faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. 